I'm David Odell with Odell Complete Concrete. Trying a new technique here where I'm going to be in person on the screen while I'm going through this wall build. What we have here is a uh, we're doing it's a little bit of a retaining wall. It's on a radius, just a little decorative front um, seat wall you could say with a couple of columns. So first of all, we're going to follow the existing radius of the sidewalk and the curb for the planter. So we're just measuring three feet off of the actual curb. So that's how we get our radius on this one. So we have some points of reference, so it makes it real easy. We don't have to try to establish a radius. It's already there. So we're going to go about a foot deep here and it's probably about uh, four or six inches below grade as well. That way uh, you can put dirt over the footing and then you can actually grow something on top of it. Uh, all that irrigation in there, uh, the homeowner did that ahead of, ahead of time. So that's just there. I'm going to work around it. We have the drainage pipe that was installed by the builder at this particular house that goes into the backyard. There's some low voltage, I believe that's what that is, or maybe it's some sprinkler kit. I'm not sure what, but there's a lot of things laying around here. But the main priority here is the wall itself. There's the actual footing. Now, all those pipes you see there, uh, the homeowner did that also as well. The ones that were stubbed up, uh, those are for probably some sprinkler heads in the future after the build of the wall. Now those pipes sticking up there and then those little wood boxes that is going to be for the actual block columns on each side of the entry. You noticed in the video, I didn't really notice until I got in here, but see the dirt right here on my, this just shoulder right here? That's because I just walked in from a job site and I'm jumping right in on this video. So here what we have, uh, we're going to mix the concrete up by hand. I'm using, uh, what am I using today? I think I'm using some 4500 PSI. I like the 4500 PSI um, because it goes off quick and it's uh, a lot stronger than the basic pre-mix bag. So that's why I use this one. You can actually put it in there, set your block on there, and it's going to dry. So that way you can go ahead and continue your build. On these columns, I'm not using just our basic 16 inch column block. Um, I'm using actually just 16 inch uh, regular block. And then I'm gonna, it ends up being a two foot box. Let's see, 16 and 622. You actually got a 22 inch square here. Oh no, I'm using an eight inch block. Sorry about that. These are 8816, so it's a 24 inch square. That's the beauty of the eights, man. It fits so nicely for when you put stuff together. Those pipes sticking up in the column, that's one is irrigation, one is drain. Because there's going to be a potted plant on here sitting on top of the column. These columns will be about six to eight inches higher than the wall itself. And they'll also be covered with some. Uh, ledger stone it's some stone that the homeowner had selected and he's going to be installing that himself so we're not going to be able to show that particular video however i will show you the uh poured in place concrete cap also i like to refer to it as a uh, decorative bond beam and what that means is it's a, a horizontal chunk of concrete with steel in it that holds the entire wall together now, I mean, those are called for in a lot of specifications, drawings, and things of that nature. But, uh, and that's usually hidden in the block. And in this case, it's going to be on top of the block and it's going to be a decorative one. So, those little wooden boxes aren't real necessary if you buy the light fixtures ahead of time. You can actually set the, the um, actual box of the light itself in the hole and put the concrete around it. And then uh, it eliminates this particular step of creating a box, a wooden box that'll have to come out. And then you have to dry pack your fixture in. So um, 
it's much easier just to set the box itself. The homeowner elected to do this. He's a very energetic guy and uh, he wants to do all this stuff a specific way. And we have a little step up in the footing back here because of the grade that we're on. So basically what we're doing is instead of having a course of block that you can't see, we just step the footing up. So when you're setting these blocks, you'll notice every block is leveled just to verify that you're coming up plumb. Now if you notice on the head joints, we uh, butter up the ends of the block and then slap them together. I've seen some people where um, they'll go ahead and leave the head joint out, which is the mortar in between the blocks. We'll leave that out and just do the uh, the horizontal one that this blocks actually stack on. And then they'll come back with a grout bag and fill in the cracks. Uh, I don't really like that system. So I always like to put the head joints on the block and then slap them together. So what we did here, we just stabbed some uh, number three rebar in here. I mean, this this wall starts at two feet and it gets down to about eight inches in the back. So it's not a very high wall because of the slope here that we're on. It will uh, retain some of the front yard. So we're gonna solid grout all these blocks. Then the homeowner is gonna uh, lay some stone on them. Most of it will be buried, however, in the back side. So we may only have to come down eight inches in the back and then bury the rest and waterproof the back of that wall. Well, here's what it looks like when you're um, all done with the block and you're pretty much ready to start grouting it solid. And your next step would be to uh, let that dry overnight depending on what grout you use I always use I always use just a 4500 when I mix by hand but in this case I'm going to be pouring the backyard with the pump so I'm going to drag the hose around the front and just fill it up with the same mix that I'm using on the patio and what I'll do instead of coming right up to the top of this block I'll leave it recessed maybe uh, two inches something like that that way when I pour my uh, poured in place cap on top of this wall it'll actually lock into the uh, top block that means it can't go anywhere now here's some of the materials here that I'm going to be using to set up the actual poured in place cap they do make some styrofoam pre-shaped styrofoam many different designs that you can actually uh, some of them have a two-sided have uh, tape where you peel it off and then you can actually stick the styrofoam right to the block or whatever your build out may be like in this case I got an inch and a half build out to allow for the stone and then uh, you can actually stick the styrofoam to this or in this case in this particular case I'm not using the styrofoam um, I try to stay away from that stuff if I can it's uh it's not reusable it's expensive and uh, it's very flimsy so you don't get really good straight edges in other words so I like to use wood whenever possible now on this all this wood that I'm using even right down to the screws uh, I reuse them I reuse these particular screws and there happen to be the blue screws or tap cons I reuse them multiple times some people will shoot it in with a uh, with a gun some of this stuff and blow your block apart some people nail them in with a hammer and blow your block apart but uh, screws are the best because then you can take it pre-drill screw screw in there 
and then take the screw out reuse it and you have a very small hole in the block I got just enough material when I calc this out on my wood. That's why I'm cutting all these 2x8s just right to fit. Because I don't believe I have any extra. The way I've cut all of these, um, let's see, what did I do? Did I log cabinet? No. No, I just, what I did here is I got two boards that are probably 22 and a half, and then two boards are 25 and a half. But I mean, if you wanted to, you could actually cut them all the um, same length, just an inch and a half longer, and you would still work. Each corner would be staggered. So now I've got to clean off a little bit of the excess mortar on the sides of this block because I want to attach uh, my uh, plastic composite recycled stuff. I'm just going to drill that in again with some tap cons, and this stuff's all reusable everything I use on this job. The only thing that I won't reuse uh, what you're gonna see pretty soon is uh, the actual siding. I found some siding at uh, Lowe's I believe it was just some 8 inch uh, siding and uh, it has, it's real flexible so I'm gonna use that to pour against and that'll attach to this plastic that I'm gonna screw into the wall. So I had to double up my uh, plastic bender board because it's only three quarters inch thick each piece so I'll double that up and that'll give me an inch and a half just like the two by fours now at the top of this uh, plastic it has to be really flush with your top of block it can't be high it can't be low because what happens if it's any of those things when you go to strip this when the concrete's wet um, you could actually create a fracture in the concrete in the part that's cantilevering over so you important to be really flush when you mount these boards on Now, basically, it all starts with the block, though, in any kind. It always starts from the ground, any particular build. So if you're not plumb and level when you start on these blocks, when you get to the top and start building these forms, you're going to run into a lot of trouble. So fortunately, the block was level and plumb and exactly where it had to be. So all I had to do is follow the block. Now right here I had to make a little modification on the bottom of this board just to get my uh, cap at full height without getting into that 2x4 that's mounted on there, on that column. So I needed enough space to finish underneath that column while the concrete was drying. And you'll see what I mean when we actually put the concrete in here, why I had to notch all that out right there. Now here's the siding I was talking about. I'm putting the wood grain. This this siding actually has like a wood grain finish on it. And I'm going to put that to the inside. Now I've actually seen uh, you can actually use this as a, a finish itself with the wood grain. And you just pour it, vibrate it, pull the form off, and it looks like wood because you have that wood grain. Then you can actually add some dyes in there too and stain it really simulate some wood grain but in this case uh, I just turned the wood grain in because it has a finished surface the concrete won't stick to it as easy now we had the other side of this uh, this particular wood to the inside it sticks to the concrete and when you go to pull it when the concrete's wet you're gonna knock some chunks off of it now I'm making a four inch raised cap here pretty healthy hefty one and I'm gonna lay two uh, th number three rebar all the way around 
since this blocks level, I mean, the level that I'm using is really not completely necessary. I'm just verifying it, even though I'm going to go four inches up on both sides. Um, it's just kind of fun to check it out with the level from time to time. So here's the rebar going in. And there's your siding that you would probably see on a, uh, outside of a building more than more than likely and not in this particular case but uh, I just use whatever whatever works and whatever is available so you can see how we recess that initial grout a little bit down on everything and that's so this cap will really lock in and before we start putting the concrete in here what I'll do is I'll wet the top of this block a little bit that way uh, it'll actually adhere better to the block and it won't flash dry on me it buys me a little more time on the finishing end of it because we got about we got close to 100 feet of uh, cantilever that we, we will be uh, stripping and finishing because you got both sides here and typically a spoon pulls about a 110 feet of coping this right here this is uh, when you count both sides it's about a hundred feet now also I'm going to put some form oil on the inside of this wood so I want it to come away real cleanly because like I said the better your prep is you know on, on concrete work the more time you're gonna have to really uh, get the kind of finish that you want you don't want to have to fight it you know at the end when the concrete's getting hard and then you got form failures and this and that and a lot of things going on in you're on a timeline with concrete you only got you know so much time to get it right because it's drying so you don't want extra things to do at the same time Here's some wire mesh that the homeowner uh, did. We got back here and he threw that wire in there. Actually, I had to take it out because uh, it was all too close to the edges and it was too high. Also, he slipped in a little quarter inch piece of bender board on me in there on that outside face. And it was sticking up into the concrete a little bit here and there. So I had to use a razor knife, cut that down. because That was uh, a problem waiting to happen. Here's my standard uh, Mobile One 100% synthetic. So when you talk about synthetics like that, you know, that's 100% uh, environmental friendly. That's why they make it. There's the rebar. I just dropped it in exactly where I wanted it. And then I just tap it down. But you can see how that rebar is not really sinking there when it was laying up on top of that concrete. And it's very difficult to get down actually, even in wet concrete. So you got to kind of tap it down or it won't go down. Now here's uh, filling up the wall cap here. Now this particular mix I'm using is also the 4500 PSI and I threw in some fiber mesh in here um, for every five bags which was a mixer full the type of mixer that I'm using those are 60 pound bags I used a handful of fiber mesh in each little batch which is five 60 pound bags I used the stealth fiber it's about three quarters of an inch long so it's barely visible and in this case it won't be visible at all because we're gonna throw some color hardener on top of this concrete so that gives you a cream layer right over the top of that fiber.
So as I'm putting this concrete in, I um, make sure to hit the sides of the forms a lot to get all the air out of it. And uh, you could use a vibrator on this. Uh, you really don't need to if you tap the edges really well. And the color of this cap is going to be uh, what they call an ash white. And it's made from a uh, Schofield makes this color hardener. It's about a 45 to 5,000 PSI. So that means um, no fading, no chipping, uh, really, really, really good uh, color coat. It's probably the best one. Color hardeners probably holds up the best out of any kind of coloring techniques out there. Because it's an integral part of the concrete when you work it in wet like this. And it gives it a nice hard shell at 5500 PSI. The nice thing about the color hardener is it's pure cream when you go to trowel this, so um, it's very, very easy to work with. Now I have another video that gets into a little bit more detail of the color hardener and the actual tools that you'll need to do a job like this. And that's in another video. And we'll throw up some links so you can go back and forth if you need to. But I'm going to put some joints here. I'm going to put them every five feet. And then also we're going to have to go down the face of this um, at the same time. So as you notice that number three rebar, what I'm doing there, I'm jabbing it down the face. That moves the rock. So when I strip this form and joint the uh, face of it, I won't have to pound my uh, joiner into the face because I've already moved the rock with the uh, number three rebar. You see that little technique there? That's a little beauty. One to definitely remember if you ever do this. Well, we threw one coat on there. We hand floated that in. We threw, uh, let that dry, threw another coat on, and then we troweled it. So usually two coats and you're pretty pretty much good to go on your color. You might find a couple more gray spots here and there. We could just do little dashes here and there. And this probably is about an hour and a half after we had, we had started mixing. This is about an hour and a half later because you know I used that 4500 so it's going to go off pretty quickly anyway. So we're going to edge the bottom of this. So I took it off that 2x8 right there. And I'm going to... What I did with that color hardener, I mixed it with some water and then, uh, then I just buttered it on kind of like a stucco project now at this point. So we're about an hour and a half, hour and 45 into this job. We're pulling the um, sides off. Okay. This is how you put the uh, cream on the sides of these. Mix it up wet in a bucket and trowel it in. You actually, they recommend you uh, hand floating it in to really make it work it into the concrete so it doesn't try to come off. But since the concrete's wet enough here, we're able just to trowel it on. Also, what you do before you even apply the colors, you want to get your edge on the bottom, get that cut in. Or at least get some of those rocks out of the way so that way when you throw the butter on there you can uh, run your, your tools real easy so we have a top tool there and then we have uh, a trowel and an edger and that's about all you need in this particular deal if you get into some of the intricate uh, foam shapes and stuff then they have specific tools that fit or supposedly fit every foam design I haven't had much luck with them fitting that well, but uh, there's some good techniques you can make make on your own to fit fit those uh, intricate foam designs. So there's the joints on the face, which I cleared out with a rebar jab. 
just to make it easy to run my uh, joiner vertically without having to beat the rock in. So this is the first side of it. We still have the uh, back side to go through. This is just going to be a, uh, a smooth finish. No broom, no sand wash, nothing uh, special. We're just going to keep it smooth. No trowel marks. Um, it's just going to kind of look like a piece of glass. About that smooth is you know, how I like to do them when I'm talking smooth finish. So I have my son going ahead of me here and throwing the butter on there, color hardener, you know, mixed with water. It's kind of like icing on a cake, basically. There's your troweling technique. I have a trowel that's just about the right size for this width of cap. and a trowel that's wide enough so if you turn it sideways you can catch the whole side of this at one with one stroke so that's kind of what it looks like when it's all said and done nice and smooth then you've got those two by fours underneath those are going to come off uh, you can't take them off the same day you might get away with it but it's risky so you leave them on there for a couple days. It depends how far you're hanging out to. I mean, the further you hang out, the longer you gotta leave it on there to support that weight before the concrete's strong enough to support itself. So we'll leave it on there uh, two days. I believe, I, no, I took this off the next morning and, and it held well. When you're removing the forms, uh, it's important when you do remove them to pull the screws and instead of pulling the form outwards, uh, pull it downwards Because if you pull it outwards, you might be hooked up underneath there if the forms weren't flush Something like that and you can knock a chunk of the face off So just go down drop them straight down This is the next day we just stripped it out and uh, taking a look at this thing and it looks pretty good Drying out real nice So that's where I needed that space on that notch out just to work the top of this lower cap. This is a half inch radius all the way around. Top and bottom and joints and depth of joints. So that's the easy one to remember. It's half inch everything. Thank you for watching the video. If you like it, subscribe. Remember, I have a link to more detailed of this video. Um, if you like these type of videos or you want to learn how to do it, you may want to press that little bell next to the subscribe button. Then you'll get all the latest and greatest when I upload. And then uh, you'll be on top of things when you get out there. Try to handle one of these things on your own. Have a good day. And thank you for watching.